So if we can put all the world's power lines underground, and we definitely can, why don't we? I mean, there you are, streaming your favorite show online, when suddenly everything goes dark. You walk outside and you see that a fallen tree, a crashed car, or ice from a snowstorm has brought down your power line. It's moments like these I think most of us have pondered, why not just stick these power lines underground where they can't be damaged? Of course, it's not that simple. Besides the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles not wanting their living room crisscrossed by our power lines, there are a couple of real obstacles to underground power. Essentially, it boils down to two things, cost and reliability. In 2002, an ice storm knocked out power to over 2 million customers in North Carolina. At the time, the possibility of placing overhead power lines under the ground was investigated. However, the price was deemed too great. The North Carolina Utilities Commission concluded in their report that the price tag would be $41 billion and would take about 25 years to complete. Compounding on that, customer rates for electricity would have to more than double to pay for the project. You see, while most people would prefer underground power wires, they don't want to pay for them. The Edison Electric Institute surveyed customers on whether they would be willing to double their electric rates in exchange for underground electric wires. The overwhelming majority responded no. This extreme estimate is not alone. A survey of numerous other studies placed the cost of converting overhead power lines into a similar range. The estimates reached anywhere from half a million dollars to five million dollars per mile. When I first read that, I thought, no, that can't be right. It wasn't until I dug into the numbers that I realized the complexity in converting different power lines isn't equal. This variation stems from the types of power lines you want to convert and their corresponding locations. You see, power lines come in all sizes. They range from large cables for mainline power transmission all the way down to the small wires for local distribution in your backyard. All of those different power lines crisscross the world in rural, suburban, and urban areas. Some parts of the world even have such a rocky subsurface that placing power lines underground would be wholly unfeasible. Take regions of Colorado or New Zealand as examples. Obviously though, underground power lines do exist. Typically, underground power lines are installed in local neighborhoods that are built from scratch. This is because the cost of placing power lines underground is tremendously lower there. Think about it. No buildings have been built yet, no asphalt poured for roads, no pesky humans living there to complain about tearing up their perfectly landscaped yards. And the ground is already trenched for sewer, water, gas, and so on. I actually saw a Reddit post from someone who claimed to be an estimator for a large electrical contractor. Apparently, a large part of the cost from installing power lines in cities is from fixing the yards of wealthy people. I don't know if it was an exaggeration or not, but the Redditor talked about how they had ripped up a dead bush to install a line. When they went to plant an almost identical bush in its place, the customer refused. In the end, the customer was compensated to the tune of $5,000 for a single plant. Makes me wonder what the going rate is for my great-great-grandmother's golden tree of infinite happiness. Okay, onward to reliability, and this one's a bit muddier. Placing power lines underground does indeed increase their resilience to some types of weather. However, it's not a panacea for all weather-related damage. Being underground does offer protection from the elements. The lines are safe from the weight of winter ice or the gusts of hurricane-force winds. But did you know they aren't entirely immune to storms? Just like their above-ground counterparts, lightning can still strike the transformers and other equipment for underground power lines. Furthermore, they aren't safe from a falling tree. Instead of the trunk falling on the lines, the tree's roots can sever the underground cable. Perhaps even more so than their above-ground counterparts, underground power lines are susceptible to earthquakes. Since the entire length of the line is now underground, any large movement, or liquefaction, of the ground anywhere along the whole cable could render it useless. Speaking of damage, most damage to underground power lines comes from people digging without knowing where the cables are. There are plenty examples of knocking out power to whole neighborhoods with errant construction equipment or homeowners and a shovel. Now what you gain in protection from storms by being underground, you trade for flooding. Each year, we seem to have an example of how flooding can knock out underground power. Recent examples that come to mind include Hurricane Sandy in New York 
Hurricane Harvey in Texas, and Hurricane Irma in Florida. While these are extreme examples, any underground area is susceptible to flooding, especially should the pumps keeping water out fail or be otherwise overwhelmed. Taking all of this into account, the failure rate of physical equipment for underground power lines is higher. Contrary to popular belief, new power lines installed below ground have a life expectancy of about 40 years, with older lines having even lower life expectancies as low as 30 years. Like it or not, above ground power lines last twice as long. Those power lines are expected to last 80 plus years. Some parts of the world already have power lines that are 60 to 70 years old. I'd imagine that's older than anyone who will watch this video. If the cable does fail, it can take days or weeks to locate the issue and make repairs, versus just mere hours for an above ground line. Since the power line is underground, digging might need to occur to even get to it. Some companies are beginning to combat this issue by implementing smart grid technology. In the future, this technology will assist in locating the failure, but it won't speed up repair times. To wrap up, I want to take a minute to talk about some things we can and are doing in places where we choose to build above ground power lines. You may have noticed in recent years an increase in metal poles for power lines. This is an ongoing effort to strengthen our energy infrastructure. These sturdy metal poles are replacing wooden ones that might be knocked over by a storm. Additionally, we can reinforce wood telephone poles with tension cables. These cables, or more specifically guy wires, add strength by anchoring the wood pole to the ground. On top of strengthening the poles that hold the power lines, we can manage the vegetation in the area. Vegetation management encompasses a whole host of things, but mainly it means keeping the vegetation healthy and in check. That means we can prune the trees to prevent limbs from taking out power lines, and we can also use water and pesticides on trees to keep them healthy. So the next time you're complaining in exasperation about a power outage or a view blocked by power lines, stop and think back to this video. Ask yourself if it's worth doubling your energy bill, betting on fewer power outages and a more pleasing view. You may decide it most likely isn't.